Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Westminster Presbyterian. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us quiet our hearts for worship.
Good morning. Let's stand and worship God. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let our light shine, giving glory to God. The Lord be with you. O God of light, your searching spirit reveals and illumines your presence in creation. Shine your radiant holiness into our lives, that we may offer our hands and hearts to your work, to heal and shelter, to feed and clothe, to break every yoke and silence evil tongues. Amen. We are not who you call us to be, so we come to you, humbled by our constant presence, to confess our sin and seek guidance through forgiveness, our bodies washed pure through water. 
In penitence and faith, let us confess our sin. God of glory, we confess that we have not sought your face. We demand signs and desire wisdom. Yet the cross of Christ is all we need. We boast about our strengths, yet the weakness of Christ has saved us. Forgive us, give us grace, teach us what is truly wise and good and blessed to show the wonder of your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, as far as the East is from the West, so far are our sins from the heart of God. Friends, the past is finished and gone. Behold, everything has become fresh and new. In the grace and love of Jesus Christ, we are new creations, and we always begin again. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. <clears throat> because God has forgiven us in Christ, we also forgive one another. <clears throat> the peace of Christ be with you all. In the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you to this service of worship of the living God. And to those of you who are new among us, we welcome you into the life of this vibrant and inclusive community of faith. If you are new among us this day and sense a potential call to living out your life of discipleship among us, we invite you to join with one of our greeters here at the baptismal font, who will be available after the service to answer any questions and share information with you about this community of faith. Please take note of all of the announcements in your bulletin today. I do want to highlight the women's retreat flyer, which you can find on the tables outside of the sanctuary. In the bulletin, it directs you to the sign-up website uh, for more information. 
as an expression of our oneness in Jesus Christ. We invite you to take the friendship pads, which you'll find at the end, the inside aisle of each pew, pass them down and back again, that we might greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ at the close of the service. Today, we have a special minute for mission for the Super Bowl of Caring, which is being led by our incredible mission-minded youth group. I ask that Callie Spencer and Warner Lamar would come forward now to share with us. Today is the Super Bowl, but it's also the soup or bowl of caring. Traditionally, this offering has gone to support hunger relief efforts, hence the name. Uh, however, this year we'll be doing something a little different. Given the tragic wildfires in East uh, Tennessee this fall, the Super Bowl of Caring offering will go to support wildfire recovery efforts in East Tennessee. We will be just outside of each door of the sanctuary today, and we'll look forward to receiving your generous gifts to support the rebuilding efforts of our neighbors in East Tennessee. Additionally, undesignated funds left in the offering plate this morning will go to support wildfire relief and recovery. All donations will go to Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee's Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Sevierville Emergency Response Fund. Thank you for living out the word by caring for our neighbors. We'd also like to highlight the summer's upcoming trips as the deadline to sign up are next Sunday, February 12th. So if you're an 8th to 12th grader and you're interested in going to Montreat, and a 9th to 12th grader going, who wants to go to Belfast, or a 6th to 8th grader who wants to go on the mission trip to Asheville, North Carolina, let TJ, Whitney, Keith, or Claire know as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks. And now it is with great joy. We are here now a day we've been waiting for with eager anticipation. And so it is that I turn this mic over to co-chair Blake Brookshire of the Associate Pastor Nominating Committee for Young Adults and Young Families to make a glorious introduction. <laughs> As many of you know, we've been looking for a new Associate Pastor. This is a brand new position, Associate Pastor to the emerging generations of the church young adults, and young families. A few days ago, our committee was before you, and we presented our uh, recommendation, and you unanimously, as a congregation, supported Rachel Pence to be our associate pastor of young adults and young families. And I'm here today with more exciting news. Rachel, you can come down. Rachel was at Presbytery yesterday and passed Presbytery ordination exams and also received unanimous support from our presbytery, to which I think she is owed a huge congratulations. So I've attended many um, presbytery meetings in my lifetime, probably way too many, but um, at those uh, candidates are examined and that's a scary, scary process and I've I've heard some interesting answers to some questions, but uh, Rachel uh, knocked it out of the park, and uh, there was quite a buzz about it afterwards when they left, the, when she left to have the congregation vote on her. Uh, the moderator asked Buzz in the hall about all this, what do you suppose that was? And I knew immediately what it was about. She preached beforehand, and it was a wonderful sermon that was on the lectionary text for today. And after she preached it, I heard God clearly say into my heart, <laughs> Donovan, you need to put your sermon away and have Rachel preach this morning. And so uh, I threw her curve this morning, and she is willing to... Uh,
The Lord be with you. We pray, O God, that you would guide us now by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of God. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why do we humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look. You serve your own interest on your fast day. You oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to clothe them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and the Lord will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
man, am I glad I had a sermon written. Our second scripture comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Hear the word of God. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them, and teaches, will be great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. We are going to take a test. This is a test taken from a TED talk by Z. Frank, and it's not just any test so you can calm your test anxiety. It is not something you can pass or fail. I'm going to just read a few statements, and if you feel like they apply to you, I invite you, I do not require, for you to just raise your hand. Simple enough. So take a deep breath, settle in, and let's begin. Have you ever dropped food on the floor and picked it up, blown it off as if your spit has magically made it clean? Have you ever made a small, weird sound when you remember something embarrassing? Ugh. Have you ever ended a text with a period as a sign of aggression? Okay, period. Have you ever seemed to lose your airplane ticket a thousand times from the gate to the check-in? Have you ever put on a pair of pants and then much, much later realized there has been a sock smushed against your thigh most of the day? <laughs> Have you ever hoped that there was some ability that you haven't discovered yet that you would just be naturally good at? Have you ever broken something in real life and looked for an undo button? Congratulations, you have all passed the test. You are all human. It's simple enough. But how often do we forget? How often do we forget what it means to be human and these basic things that we all do that connects us? How often do we preach and study that we are the body of Christ? Yet the minute that our politics differ, the minute we are hurt by another, the minute we are cut off in traffic, we forget. We forget the humanity of the person next to us. Because our lives dip and turn, they rise and they fall, and we forget. Right now, our country is painfully divided, overwhelmed, with separation, and we become isolated and forget. In our work and our families, we become silos and we forget. We forget about ourselves and the humans that surround us. Because sometimes it's just easier to think that someone is less important or has less to offer because she's young and exuberant or old and subdued. Sometimes we forget that another is of equal value because their opinion on a particular issue, and we dismiss them as uninformed because they are liberal or conservative, traditional or progressive. We forget our humanness. We forget that we have all rehearsed arguments in our heads before we've had them. 
we forget that we have all checked our phone ten times, certain that it must have vibrated that time. And we all know the feeling when our heart breaks. These simple things, these simple things that bring us together, as simple as salt and light. Our scripture today speaks of these words of salt and light, reminding us of these essential elements that are fundamental to the world. And in our faith, we hear so much about light. In the beginning, God spoke light into the darkness. John's gospel begins with the light shining in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Light of the world permeating this biblical text, unhidden and unable to be ignored. But the salt, other than this scripture, there are no grand sweeping statements about salt. In the Old Testament, we hear of Lot's wife who gets turned into a pillar of salt, which is not great. And some other parts of the Old Testament, people seal covenants with salt, but it's not something we incorporate into our daily worship practices. But it is essential and deeply a part of it. Because you see, salt slows down the fermentation process of yeast in bread, helping it to rise into a loaf. And in some cases, salt is used to balance wine as it's being fermented. And outside of the church, salt is everywhere. It's in our food, it's in our sweat. 97% of the earth is covered in salt water. It makes up who we are and what we believe it is foundational. This saltiness brings us together. Salt of the earth, essential quality that earth and humanity need, that we need in one another because it binds us together. This salt of the earth, our shared humanity, because we forget. We forget that we sweat, that we are salty like the person next to us. And we forget the power of being the light of the world, this salt and light. And then you have this scripture, and it says, you are the salt of the earth, you. You are the light of the world, you. I like to picture Jesus just taking our faces in his hands and saying, you, you beautifully messy human, you are salt and light. See, the essential quality of light is to illumine what is already there. Similarly, the essential quality of salt is to bring out what is already there. So we need each other as humans to shine a light and to pass this salt, this salt that brings us together, reminding us that we are human, reminding us when we forget, bringing us together. When I was in seminary, I forgot. I was unsure of where I fit in ministry, and I felt trampled underfoot, and I felt I had lost my flavor. And then I met the popsicle lady. Her name was Amy, and she ran a nonprofit ministry that I worked with during my seminary career. This was a multifaceted ministry that impacted the community and the youth involved with it in various ways. But one particular piece was on hot afternoons. We would stand under a large oak tree near one of the largest day shelters and hand out popsicles, inviting people into conversation to just take a moment and rest under a tree. Through sticky fingers and conversations, Amy invited people in, reminding them that they were an essential part of this thing we are calling life. Not everyone knew her name, but everyone knew when the popsicle lady was out. And day after day, I witnessed as she created community. She passed the salt to all around her and created a table where there was none. She made space for others to laugh and to weep and to pass the salt to one another, reminding them, reminding each other of this dazzling coincidence we have of being human. 
she did the same to me. She passed the salt to me when I felt lost in my ministry. She saw me first as a human, the salty, light-filled human who was essential. And on Friday afternoons, we would sit together and she would ask me two questions every week. What did you feel brought out in you this week? And what did you hold back? Just an hour or so every week where she saw the light, the salt that was within me, and she reminded me of a calling, the light that could not be hidden. And she passed that salt to me, bringing out what was already there. She brought out in me a calling. She died four years ago yesterday. God is funny that way. This salt that she passed to me is foundational to how I do ministry. This ministry of presence that I take into everything that I do, reminding me of those Friday afternoons and the importance of acknowledging the salt and light within ourselves and one another. Knowing that when we feel trampled underfoot, when we feel we have lost our flavor, the body of Christ shows up. And it ignites in us what is already there. This salt that brings us together when we open up space for each other's light. Igniting our senses, reminding us that we belong here with one another. That is why I wanted to remind you that you are human. Because we forget. And in this divided time, we are called to come to one another and say, you, you, child of God, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are essential, and we can't do this without you. This beloved community needs you. All of what you are, you beautifully messy human child of God. Salt and light. Both of these pieces bringing out what is already there, bringing us together, illumining the path and seasoning our ministry, creating this body of Christ. So congratulations. You get to be human. The greatest gift that we have is this understanding. Because you are deeply essential crucial to this thing we call ministry, indispensable to this thing we call life. Salt of the earth, light of the world, body of Christ. Amen. Let's stand together and say what we believe using the Nicene Creed found on page 34 of our hymnal. Let us confess the faith of the universal church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and east and west to sit at Christ's table and eat of this feast which he has prepared. Come, not because you must, but because you may. Come at Christ's invitation. For here it is that he gives his life, his body, his bread of life for us, that we might have life and have it abundant. Here in his feast, he pours out his saving grace for us in his life, death, and resurrection, that we might live as free, beloved people in his everlasting, redeeming love. So come and be at peace. The Lord be with you. Be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, in your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and to obey you, you did not reject us, but you still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way, and then in the fullness of time, out of the great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Majesty and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In Jesus, born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Full of grace and truth, he lived as one of us. Knowing joy and sorrow, he healed the sick, fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, broke bread with outcasts and sinners, and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. Dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world. Rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. Seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you in glory and will come again to make all things new. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will go O gracious God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, we pray, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every time and place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ, broken, given, to serve the world. We come to Christ's table, God, with our whole selves, 
and we come with much on our hearts and our minds this day. We give you thanks for all the gifts of life which you bestow upon us. Hear us now as in the silence of our hearts. We give you thanks for this bread, this cup, and all your blessings. Hear our thanks and praise. Gracious God, as we receive these gifts of bread and cup with gratitude for Christ's saving power, for the living of all our days, we lift up to you in the silence as well the concerns of our hearts, our prayers of need and intercession for ourselves, for those we love, for the whole world. Hear our prayers, Almighty God. As we lift up these prayers of our hearts to you, O God, we are in union with your church in heaven and on earth, and we pray that you will fulfill your eternal purpose in us and in all the world. Give us faithful service and keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The Apostle Paul has written that on the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he was at supper with the disciples. And after they had eaten, he took bread. He broke it, blessed it, and thanked God for it, and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this, remembering me. The same manner he took the covenant of my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat of this bread or drink from this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord until he comes. For friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The Lord be with you. O oh God of love, which knows no end, we thank you for the gift of this sacred meal, shared in the spirit and power of Jesus Christ, who gives us life eternal. Through this meal, O oh God, bring to us renewed faith and courage that we would be your salt and light, pouring out our lives, serving like Jesus Christ, for the sake of the world he came to save. And it is his blessed name we pray and say, Amen. into the world, remembering the dazzling coincidence it is to be human. And pass the salt, shine your light, and may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.